Dear Lord, I want to thank you again for this day you've given us that we've waited our entire lives for. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will wrap us in your arms, Lord, and give us peace for this day, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will help us grow in you, Lord, and always be what you want us to be, Lord, and help us to encourage and support one another when things get hard. Just be with us, Lord, and I just want to thank you again, Lord. It's favor and blessings, that's in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, that which God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Mitch and Shelby's courtship has been stretched over the course of them growing up. They always had interest in each other, but it seemed like the time was never just right. But the good Lord was waiting for His time.
Good evening, everyone. You may be seated. We are gathered here today not to witness what is to be, but to celebrate what has already developed between Mitch and Shelby. And we are taught before engaging in any great or important undertaking to invoke the blessing of deity. Let us bow now and pray God's blessing upon this couple. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's once again that we bow before Thee. We are thankful for the love that has emerged and blossomed between Mitch and Shelby. We as their friends and family have been so blessed to watch their relationship develop and emerge into enduring love. We ask that you bless them with a joyous life together and enrich them with compassion, endurance, and forgiveness for each other. May your hand ever be upon them during both the times of laughter and the times of tears, and only bring them closer together. In thy holy name we pray, and for thine sake, amen. amen. Who gives this woman to be wed? A mother and I do. Y'all ready? ready? Yeah. Don't lock your knees. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, Shelby, I want to remind you to always remember those unique qualities that drew each of you to each other from the very beginning. That wonderful feeling of oneness when your eyes meet. When asked about her love for Mitch, Shelby recounts the first time that she knew that she loved him. And she says, I knew I loved him the day my grandfather passed away in May. Mitch and I had been dating for several months at that point. And when my grandfather was in the hospital, I spent several days there with my entire family. I witnessed the love and compassion that my grandmother gave my grandfather. She never left his side during his final days. I knew in that moment that I loved Mitch. And that if anything had happened to him, I would feel the same type of hurt that my grandmother felt. I knew that I wouldn't want to go through life without him. You both have seen great examples of loving relationships in your parents and your grandparents, and I charge you to emulate that love in your life. Mitch recounts how he has always been drawn to Shelby, her beauty, her easiness, their ability to almost always be in agreement and their reliance and love of family are things that make him love her. To love is to constantly search for new ways to bring each other happiness, to make the most of every moment you share together. Mitch and Shelby's courtship has been stretched over the course of them growing up. They always had interest in each other, but it seemed like the time was never just right. But the good Lord was waiting for His time. On one of their early dates, Mitch took Shelby to see a movie. Mitch, being a gentleman, bought, both, bought them both drinks for them to have while they were watching the movie. And Shelby was so nervous that she forgot to even put Coke in her cup. <laughs> She sat through the entire movie with an empty cup. <laughs> now, Mitch had shared this story with his family, but he had never shared with them until just recently that the girl with the empty cup was Shelby. <laughs> Take joy in these small moments of laughter. So what do we mean by love? When we love, we see things other people do not see. We see beneath the surface to the qualities that, which make our beloved special and unique to us. To see with loving eyes is to know inner beauty, and to be loved is to be seen and known as we are known to nobody else. 
The one we love most gives us a unique gift that no one else can give us. Mitch and, and Shelby, I want you now and throughout the course of your marriage to remember the memories that you have given to each other. Your first date. I'm told that you went to McDonald's and, play on, and played on the playground together. <laughs> now that may seem a little cheap for someone in their 20s to take a girl to McDonald's, but Mitch and Shelby were six years old. To make this relationship work will take more than just love. It takes trust to know in your hearts that you want only the best for each other. <clears throat> Mitch, your love for Shelby is only to be surpassed by that love you have for God and his bride. As a minister, be patient and enduring with Shelby. Support her as she supports you. Shelby, you are about to marry a minister of the gospel. This is no small responsibility. Remember to support him, pray for him, and be patient with his service for the Lord. It takes dedication to stay open to one another, to learn and to grow even when it is difficult to do so. Shelby, when Mitch has spent a little bit too much time editing a video or has spent too many nights at Lodge, love him. Mitch, when you are frustrated that Shelby has slept through the entire movie and wants to ask 15 questions at its end, love her. When she refuses to make a decision about where to eat, smile and remember her easygoing personality that draws you to her. Laugh through the tough times. Talk. And listen, when you're so mad that you don't even want to look at each other, Mitch, think about that empty cup in the theater. <laughs> don't resist the urge to go to her, hug her, and tell her that you love her. Shelby, remember that you knew years before that you and Mitch became serious and that you told Sarah you were going to marry Mitch Denny. Lastly, it takes faith to stay true to the journey you both now pledge to share. We're reminded of the scriptures in the book of Ruth that say, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught, but death part thee and me. Through this journey, you give yourselves into the hands of another. You do so trustingly and generously. Mitch, Shelby... Is it now your intent to be joined in marriage to each other forever? Yes. The couple will now signify their desire to be united in marriage by lighting the unity candle. Mitch, do you desire to take Shelby to be your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, cherish, and respect her 
and forsaking all others to cleave unto her as your wife, so long as you both shall live. I do. Shelby, do you desire to take Mitch to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, cherish, and obey him, and forsaking all others to cleave unto him as your husband, so long as you both shall live. I do. Mitch and Shelby, you have, expre have expressed uh, their desire to be joined in marriage. Therefore, if there is any one present who can show just cause why these two should not be joined in the bonds of holy matrimony, let them now speak or forever hold their peace. Give them a fair chance. <laughs> Mitch, what token do you give to Shelby as pledge of your undying love to her? A ring. It is here. <laughs> In the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, uh, there is a parable concerning a young man that asked his father one time to give him the portion of goods that fell to him. Not many days hence, he took all that he had and went into a far country. And the Bible teaches us that there he wasted his substance with riotous living. During the Coming days, he came to himself. He realized his mistakes. And he said that, I, that he would return to his father. The Bible tells us that when he was yet a great way off, that his father saw him and had compassion on him. And he ran to him. One of the things that he gave him that day was a ring which I consider to be a symbol of the forgiveness and the fact that the love was always there and always would be. Mitch, you will place the ring on the third finger of Shelby's left hand and repeat after me. I, Mitch, take thee, Shelby. I, Mitch, take thee, Shelby. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For richer and for poorer. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love. To love. Honor. Honor. Cherish. Cherish. And respect you. And respect you. To forsake all others. To forsake all others. And to cleave unto you alone. And to cleave unto you alone. And to perform all those duties. And to perform all those duties. Unto you. Unto you. That a husband owes to his wife. That a husband owes to his wife. This I pledge unto you. This I pledge unto you. With my undying love. With my undying love. Shelby, what token do you give Mitch as pledge of your undying love to him? A ring. As y'all look at this ring, you will notice that at any point that you enter onto it. If you continue in the same direction, that you will never leave it. And you will continually come back around and around again. Your love towards each other should be the same way. As you enter into this today and this commitment for life, it is never ending. And always let this be a reminder to you of that. Shelby, you will place the ring on the third finger of Mitch's left hand and repeat after me. I shall be take thee Mitch. I shall be take thee Mitch. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love. To love. Honor. Honor. Cherish. Cherish. And respect you. And respect you. And to forsake all others. And to forsake all others. And to cleave unto you alone. And to cleave unto you alone. And to perform all those duties unto you. And to perform all those duties unto you. That a wife owes to her husband. That a wife owes to her husband. This I pledge unto you. This I pledge unto you. With my undying love. With my undying love.
Let us pray. Father, as we bow before you here again, we thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to have come together to witness this union. We're thankful, Lord, for these two. And we ask you, Father, as they have stood here before thee and before these witnesses today and confess their love one for another and confess, Lord, their desire to be united in the bonds of matrimony. We ask you, Lord, to look down this day on them. And, Lord, we know the days ahead that they're not always going to be smooth. There's going to be problems. There's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulations in this marriage. But, Father, I'd ask you to look down on them and help them. Lord, not just this day, but down through their life. That you'd help them to remember the vows, dear God, that they have taken this day before thee. And help them, Lord, in the best of their ability to live up to those vows the way they ought. We ask you, Lord, to bless their life together. And help them, Lord, to grow more and more to love one another. We ask you, Father, that if someday you should choose to bless this union, Lord, with children, that, Lord, you'd look after those children, that you'd help them, that they might be healthy and strong. And, Lord, most especially, that when they reach the years of accountability, that they would be saved. We ask you, Lord, to bless these families. Lord, as we've known Mitch, Lord, as long as we can remember, and Lord, have come to know Shelby, we can look, dear God, and see the good job that these families have done in raising this young couple. And I'd ask you, Lord, to bless them Dear God, for their efforts in doing such. We ask you, Lord, to help now these two as they go forward. Bless them in their life. And Lord, help us all, dear God, to be reminded ourselves this day of the vows that we likewise have taken in days gone by. All of these favors, these blessings, we ask in Christ's name, and it is for his sake that we beg it all. Amen. Amen. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we are taught that better is it, is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. May God help you both to remember that your strength comes from on high, and God is an ever-present help in the time of need. I trust God is impressed upon your minds and hearts the seriousness of the vows that you have just taken. And may he help you to ever remember them and to think of each other's welfare above your own. By the authority vested in me by Siloam Missionary Baptist Church and having upon me the sanction of the state of Tennessee, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Therefore, that which God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Family and friends, it is my distinct pleasure to be able to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell Lane Denning.
those who don't know me, my name's Annalie Wilson, and I am Shelby's sister. Now, for those of you who know a little bit more about me, and you know that if we did a blood test, we would not be actual sisters. Um, we wouldn't even be close. However, we still are sisters. You see, we grew up together. We are three months apart. We each have a brother as our only other sibling, and we spent most of our childhood dressing in matching outfits. Um, some really weird ones, <laughs> definitely involved. We couldn't have looked more different with her curly, um, with her curly brown hair and my straight blonde hair with horrible straight uh, front bangs that are the reason I still don't have bangs to this day. We did everything together. We went to the same schools, same family functions, and we have been there for each other through it all, the good and the bad, the happy and the sad, the laughs and the tears. I was there for her when she busted a tooth on the side of my bathtub and ran out screaming naked. I was there for her when she danced with a boy for the first time at our sixth grade dance at good old Sumner Academy. I was there for her when we went to church camp together and cried the whole time together. I was there for her when she got a personal record in the long jump and track in high school. I was there for her at prom when we thought we were on top of the world, little did we know. And I was there for her when she graduated from nursing school and got her dream job in the NICU. I was also there for her when she lost grandparents, great-grandparents, and even a beloved family pet. And when she experienced heartbreak for the first time. I'm still there with her on our driving adventures around town when we stop for snow cones at Retro Snow every chance we get. And when we finally fall asleep after laughing so how much it hurts about things that only we find funny. I know every step she's taken to get where she is today. And if anyone deserves their happily ever after, it's her. Mitch and Shelby have known each other since they were six, pulling grass and doing cartwheels together on the t-ball field. <laughs> it's the only thing they did. They didn't play t-ball. They just pulled grass and did cartwheels. <laughs> They have been together and apart over the last 18 years, as they grew up, learned who they were, and who they wanted to be. When Shelby told me that she and Mitch were together again in January of 2018, I was not shocked or surprised. You see, they had done this before, multiple times. But it took a while for me to realize it was a little different this time. When I finally came around, it was because Shelby would text me constantly saying that her and Mitch were talking marriage and that they were planning forever together. I realize now, after seeing Shelby and Mitch together and hearing their plans for forever, that this is indeed real. Shelby and I have always said that we'll be there for each other from cradle to grave, and that we'll celebrate each other's successes and failures. We'll always be family. I now have the privilege of adding yet another member to our family, one who will also be there for Shelby until the end, who will celebrate her successes and her failures, who will laugh with her and cry with her, who will protect her from heartbreak and the stresses of the world, and who will always be her family. Welcome to the family, Mitch, and I wish both of you all the love and happiness that the world has to offer. Don't expect my speech to be as poetic or as moving as Annalise was, but first off, I just wanna say that if you're a Denning and you're here, you're probably relieved. We've been waiting on this day for a really long time. We were worried about Mitch, to be honest with you. And to, to be straight up, being dead serious, Annalie, they talked about age and all that. Mitch is four years older than me. It never felt like that. It was always me taking care of him. I, when I tell you that I would be asleep in my room at night and Mitch would walk in and ask me to sleep with him, I'm not joking. <laughs> that is dead serious. And I've known Shelby, I guess, as long as Mitch has known Shelby, because they met when they were six, so I would have been two when they met. So Shelby's been in my life for 17 years, so that's really cool, too. She's already been like a sister to me as long as she's been with Mitch. She obviously means a lot to me. She brings a lot of masculinity to the family, because Mitch doesn't, really. <laughs> but no, being dead serious, Shelby's been like a sister to me. She's been there for me in some very difficult times. 
I don't think that there's a better woman that Mitch could have married. She's, she's meant a lot to me in the past couple of years. She's been a part of my life in a really big way. And I hope that whenever I get married that I have as many good friends here as Mitch and Shelby do, and that shows how much you guys care about it, and I really want that for when I get married. But in all seriousness, Mitch and Shelby, I could not be happier for y'all, and that just shows how big God is and how his plan is so much greater than ours. Because if it probably would have been what y'all wanted, it probably wouldn't have happened. If you look at it, because y'all broke up like 17 times. And <laughs> But... I wish all the blessings on Mitch and Shelby. They were a big part of my life, and I love them to death.